In the beginning, there was nothing, and then after a long while we had the Earth, but without any people. In fact, it took quite a bit of time before anything living and breathing at all showed up. But eventually they did, which is a good thing because otherwise there'd be no one to watch this video, or make the video, or well, you get the idea. But sometimes you might ask, where did people come from? You wouldn't be the first to ask, and people have literally died defending their theory of why we exist. But in modern times, we should be thankful scientists haven't started wars or gone out on murder crusades in defense of their existence and evolution theories. Many rational people these days agree that species have evolved over a very long period of time, but that doesn't really explain why we or any other living thing exists at all. Today we'll take a crack at trying to solve the riddle of existence. First, we should say that the question of how life began and evolved on Earth is not an exact science. For the most part, scientists use something called the fossil record to see when certain events occurred. But the problem with this is that there's still a lot of missing bits. Scientists can see certain events, but there are long periods where it seems like nothing happened, or they haven't found anything to fill the gaps. The experts can also use something called the molecular clock, which in simple terms means scientists look at the story written in the DNA of living organisms. By doing that, they can compare how similar or different species are on a molecular level to try and figure out when different species diverged or split off each other. As we said in the beginning, there wasn't any life. Some people might tell you that God made man and other living species out of the dust of the earth, doing a fine job but making a few mistakes here and there, or perhaps purposely making everything with some design flaws. While God having a man factory in the sky was a popular theory for a long time, it's a hard sell to most people these days. The theory of evolution gradually supplanted biblical stories of a Garden of Eden, with one recent survey by Pew Research Center stating that 81% of Americans believe that humans evolved over time. So let's stick with the theory of evolution. How does that go? It's a rather long story. In fact, it's the longest story ever told, so we'll try to shorten it for you. It's generally thought life on Earth got off the ground at about 3.8 billion years ago. But as we said, this is only a ballpark figure, an informed guess. That first life might have evolved in something called an alkaline hydrothermal vent under the sea. Many scientists say that these vents were the ideal setting for the production of something called ribonucleic acid, or RNA. This is important stuff, so we'll give you the dictionary definition of this rather than try to paraphrase. That definition reads, a nucleic acid present in all living cells. Its principal role is to act as a messenger carrying instructions from DNA for controlling the synthesis of proteins, although in some viruses RNA rather than DNA carries the genetic information. The theory goes that these hydrothermal fluids went up through vents and hit the primordial seawater. In short, the reaction from this ended up producing simple organic molecules, and a bunch of reactions led to the formation of amino acids. Let's just say that you have bubbles in the water full of the these molecules and they're self-replicating. This led to the production of the first cells or protocells. We then got to the production of bacteria and archaea, which scientists will tell you are like the roots of the tree of life. Other theories do exist as well, such as life coming by way of a rock from Mars. That would make us part Martian, or were these reactions caused under the ice from an electrical storm? No one knows for certain. What we do know is that single cell organisms were eventually produced. Life did not start out looking at all like a finished product. Human Humans and turtles and starfish all had to evolve from single-celled organisms. The oldest of those, according to the fossil record, lived about 3.5 billion years ago. And that's all there was for a long time. About a billion years, in fact, with single cells doing nothing but simply existing. Then at about 2.4 billion years ago, something special happened, what scientists call the Great Oxidation Event, where more oxygen started appearing on Earth due to a number of factors. Then 2.3 billion years ago, the Earth got very cold possibly because there wasn't much volcanic activity. It might have also been because high concentrations of O2 caused the methane, CH4, in the atmosphere to oxidize in the form of CO2. This led to what's now called the first snowball Earth. It didn't stay a giant ball of ice for long, and when the ice melted, more oxygen was produced. Around 2.15 billion years ago, there's evidence of photosynthesis occurring on Earth. More oxygen was produced as a result of this. Around 2 billion years ago, there's evidence of a big event when one single cell got with another single cell. Together, they got along and they reproduced together, forming something called eukaryotic cells. 
Now, things are really taking off because soon they led to the formation of the first green plants and green algae. But it was about 900 million years ago when an even greater event happened, the formation of true multicellular life, and eventually entities known as Placozoa. These three-celled creatures are tiny, only about one millimeter across, but they are the ancestor of all animals on Earth. You must remember that these things were not exactly complex animals. Humans have over 37 trillion cells, while the mighty Placozoa has just three. It took us a while to get to the point where the three-celled organisms were swimming in Earth's oceans, and that's with many, many parts left out. Sorry, evolutionary scientists, but we don't have 900 million years to tell the story. To cut the story shorter, again, the Earth froze into a giant snowball another time. It thawed out and more complex organisms evolved that lived in the water, some of which were the ancestors of the modern jellyfish we all know and love. Then, around 630 million years ago, something great happened again, and that was living things appearing with bilateral symmetry. What's that, you might inquire? Well, these are animals that have a defined top and bottom part. Before that, things mostly looked like a piece of floating jelly. The first of these new, exciting, and more aesthetically pleasing creatures may have been Vernanomalcula guizawina, a bit of a mouthful and honestly still not much to look at. It resembles a circular shaped spring and has even been nicknamed the small spring animal, but we prefer to call it the pretzel worm. Now, animal life is really out to the races, but we're still a long way from things like you that can peel oranges and talk about existential philosophy. It started happening though when the pretzel worm evolved, or we should say kind of split off into two different forms, which we can call protostomes and deuterostomes. The former will become arthropods, i.e. things with an exoskeleton such as insects and spiders. The latter will Will become the vertebrates, such as mammals, birds, and fish. Around 550 million years ago, the sea was full of these more complex animals, and we know from fossils that those in the waters were early starfish, jellyfish, and sea anemones. But soon, something started growing a backbone, and we don't mean that they were getting braver. One of the first vertebrates we got was something that resembled a tadpole. Starting at around 565 million years ago, some of these things didn't just float about, but they moved of their own accord. They were going places. It would just take a few more million years to get much farther. And just for a second, try and grasp what's happened in the last 10 years or 100 years, and then try and grasp a million and realize how short our time as modern people has actually been when compared to the ages our tadpole ancestors spent swimming around the ocean. Then about 535 million years ago, something major happened again, something scientists know about by looking at fossils and seeing an explosion of life forms. They call this the Cambrian explosion, and no one knows really why so many complex animals suddenly appeared. That's a story in itself, and scientists are still debating what caused it. The explosion didn't exactly happen overnight, with the University of Berkeley saying it was more like over 13 million years, so okay, not an explosion in the way we normally think about it, but on a geological scale that's just a blink of an eye. During that time, things that looked a lot like small animals we see today started popping up. Some of the earliest vertebrates looked a bit like modern eels, and one of the most famous pictures of a fossil is something that looks like a giant wood lice, which is in actuality an arthropod called a trilobite. But we'll have to fast forward again. Around 490 million years ago, we had the Great Ordovician Biodiversification Event, a mouthful of a name that means more diversity in animal groups and plants. Give it a few more million years and plants would start to colonize the land. In the sea, the fish are getting split into two groups, the bony ones and the ones called cartilaginous fish, who will one day turn into sharks. Then around 417 million years ago, we have another hugely important event when something called the lungfish appeared. They had a set of lungs that allowed them to breathe out of water, unlike other fish. If their water source dried up, they could survive, a huge evolutionary advantage. 397 million years ago, we finally get the first tetrapod, or four-legged animal, a momentous event because these four-legged things would end up taking over the land. They would become all mammals, birds, amphibians, and reptiles. So about this time, we had things that could breathe out of water and animals whose fins were developing into limbs. But let's just say that over 300 million years ago, during that era, these life forms split and started to look different. Some for example would become the reptiles, dinosaurs, while others would become birds. We also had the synapsids, the first mammal-like reptile. 
but building things is never easy and there's always periods of collapse. There was a mass extinction around 250 million years ago. Some things survived and the dinosaurs would take over after this. Over the next 100 million years, we had lots of dinosaurs, evolving mammals, the first proper birds, and then there's a hazy period, for scientists anyway, because no one knows exactly how it happened. But around 100 million years ago, the mammals split into a lot of different groups. They would become all the primates, rodents, elephants, armadillos, bats, pooches, pretty much the whole shebang. You have this explosion and split all the while the dinosaurs are wandering the earth. The biggest ever dinosaurs in fact, including the giant sauropod. Many millions of years later on land, grass starts growing, and that's a huge deal. But around 5 million years after things start getting green, there was another mass extinction, and this is called the Cretaceous Tertiary Extinction. Goodbye giant dinosaurs, goodbye plesiosaurs, nice to have met you pterosaurs. Rest in peace, dear ichthyosaurs, but dry your tears because now we take over. The age of mammals beckons. The primates split into two groups and one of those groups will become monkeys and apes and eventually us. Then around 55 million years ago, the earth heats up and we have another extinction. Lots of life dies, but lots survive too. The fossil record over the next few million years shows things that look like whales and dolphins, but we also get Ida. That's the fossil that could be the missing link, the magic monkey, Darwinius Massillae, a primate that somewhat resembles Homo sapiens. And over millions more years, we would see more primates. They would split, such as when apes branched off from old world monkeys around 25 million years ago. Over millions of years, other primates would emerge, such as gibbons, orangutans, and gorillas. Then, around 6 million years ago, relatives of humans would diverge from chimpanzees and bonobos. We got the Homo genus around 2.5 million years ago. These look like ape people, but then they stood up straight. We call these folks Homo erectus. We later got more intelligent Neanderthals, hunting and gathering, but we don't think they had painting and abstract thinking. After this was the rise of Homo sapiens. We had the great leap forward perhaps 50,000 years ago when humans started drawing on cave walls and wearing jewelry, thinking about the future, planning, and that led to agriculture, society, language, art, politics, and finally, you watching this on a digital platform and wondering why it all started in the first place. Why molecules reacted and formed a cell. Why those cells got it on. Why things came together and diverged. And the simple reason might be that it just happened. In the beginning there was a reaction, and that led to another reaction, and that's why we exist. Or do you disagree? Tell us in the comments. Also be sure to check out our other video, What Happens When You Die. Thanks for watching, and as always don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.